everybody. It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. Welcome to another episode. This is part two of my uh, Yard Machines 20 horsepower um, Briggs single cylinder overhead valve engine uh, lawn tractor. It has a CVT transmission, but then uh, I was so excited because I saw a CVT transmission. I'm like, ooh, something different that I've never done or ever worked on, right? But actually, it's simply just the lever of the uh, speed, you know? This is exactly the same as my Rodham's Prime transmission, so it's just a fancy word for the same thing, you know? Uh, so I've had a bunch of them like that. It's not a big deal. It's just variable speed is what it is, you know? It's got the two pulleys over here that, you know, depending on the speed, it opens and closes. Just overcomplicates things if you ask me, you know? Anyway, so when I got this tractor from my uh, trade with uh, Mondo over at Mondo Mowers, I got uh, seven tractors from him uh, on a trade. I also picked up another tractor that same day, so that was Mega mega Load, uh, Mother Load. Yeah, it should be a Mega Load, right? Well, it's Mother Load 26. I've had 26 Mother Loads. Yeah, that's how much equipment I've had in the past couple of years, you know? Um, so. We got this engine running, you know, smooth like a baby yesterday, you know. Um, did some solenoid stuff and uh, rewiring, um, put a battery in there, uh, swapped out three carburetors just to get the right one. Uh, I think I've got a handle on those uh, Chinese Nikki carbs, okay. So the kind of Nikki carb that has the fuel output or fuel input nozzle straight out, that's for smaller horsepower engines, such as 15 down, you know. Uh, the one, the Nikki carb that has the nozzle that comes out and then a right angle turn, right? That's for like 17 horsepower and higher. That's the one I have on this one, right? And this is a 20 horsepower engine, runs beautiful. So I think the uh, jet nuts are drilled out a little bit more to allow more fuel to go through to accommodate the higher horsepower engine. This is what I'm thinking, but the two that I tried first yesterday, there were the nozzle that sticks straight out. So then it was surging a lot because maybe the hole wasn't as big to allow enough fuel to get in to accommodate a 20 horsepower engine. The one that has the curved one out, obviously, it runs beautiful, just super smooth, you know. I'm going to start this up uh, in a little bit and uh, check the uh, stator to see if it's charging the battery. You know, that's important, very important. Um, when I first got this tractor, right, I had to loosen the mower deck belt off the bottom part of the double stack pulley because it was fused on there. It hasn't been run in such a long time that it was just stuck on there, you know, so I had to remove it. When I had first uh, moved the flywheel back and forth, it almost seemed like it was catching onto the belt and that one of the blades was caught and it wasn't allowing it to move. So it was going clink, clink, clink almost the thought that maybe a connecting rod was blown, but the sound, the clink, 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 was coming from the mower deck, not the engine. So as we all know, the engine runs just beautiful. It's a great engine, you know, 20 horsepower is nothing to sneeze at. But I think that something is caught on the pulleys or the spindles or the blades of the mower deck. So unfortunately, I have to remove the entire mower deck. This looks kind of like the Troy built one where the main pulleys are attached to the steering column and not the mower deck, and the mower deck only has the pulleys for the um, spindles to the belts for the blades. Uh, so I think the idler and tensioner pulleys are actually on the tractor itself on top. It's a terrible design, and I know I'm going to struggle with this, you know. And uh, But I don't mind doing mower decks anymore because I've gotten really good at it because I've done so many mower decks, you know. It, it, you don't even really need directions, you know. You could just tell by the back of the belt and the V part of the belt, the pulleys, whether they're flat or if they're V. You can just kind of tell how they're uh, routed. And um, it, it's kind of like physics too, you know, in engineering. You know, you could see what part connects to what, what lifts what, what moves something, what tightens the belt, you know. It's interesting, you know. And since I've worked on MTDs a lot, um, I should be able to figure out what's wrong with this uh, deck. Because I don't want to engage the PTO without knowing exactly what's being caught down there because I don't want to uh, blow a belt or something like that, you know. So it, it's better safe to be so, uh, better safe than sorry to first check the uh, mower deck, make sure everything's loosened up and spinning before I go and try the PTO, right. But uh, once I do start this up, I'm going to check the voltage, right, and see if the battery is charging at over um, 
you know, 12.5, 12.6 volts and climbing, right? Ideally, you want it to be over 13 volts for it to be properly charging the battery. Um, then while the engine's running, I'm going to kind of put it in gear and see if it'll move forward and backwards. Oh, God. So I've got my handy dandy multimeter from Harbor Freight Tools. Yes, you get those for free. That's right, free. So anyway, look, I'm going to start up the engine, see? Choke. What the hell? What the baloosh? That battery is dunsky. I'm going to have to hook up a battery charger just to get it started. Got it started now. It's not running unless it's off a choke. I mean, on choke. Let's test and see what it's charging at. See if it does charge. Awesome. As you can see, well, I don't know why it just stopped. Just took out the spark plug and it was filled with the oil. I just cleaned it off a little, but I'm going to change it with this one, this NGK one. So would you believe it? Um, there's no spark coming out of the uh, spark plug. Not at all. Um, I'm going to have to check out the magneto. why things happen you know just who knows why things happen I just don't I just don't know sometimes you know that's just trying to check whether or not you know uh, the battery charges by the way it does you know I don't know if you guys saw it or not but it was charging at 13.25 or so until it stalled and stopped so um, why did it stall and stop I have no idea why you know what I'm saying I had plenty of gas and all that stuff you guys know the car this thing ran beautifully yesterday you know what I mean but then all of a sudden it just stalled and wouldn't restart again you know so I checked for spark, and there was no spark. So I had to remove the entire cover just to get to the magneto. I thought I had to change the magneto. I actually took the magneto off until I realized that maybe I should just try testing it with the uh, taking the magneto kill wire off of the magneto so that there's nothing preventing it from sparking, you know? So I put it back again, but before I put it back again, I, uh, I cleaned the terminals. You know, I sanded the, that thing down and uh, took all the rust off, and so, so, you know, if I put it back on there, it, it's nice. So uh, as you saw, I put a business card there, and I did the air gap of the magneto just to test it. Um, I pulled the kill wire off the magneto, right, took it off, and it had spark, plenty of it, you know. So I thought it's the magneto wire, the kill wire, going to the uh, ignition switch. However, it doesn't go to the ignition switch. The magneto kill wire goes through that spaghetti of safety switches again, you know what I mean? So... Uh, Bypass that, took a wire straight from the magneto tab of the ignition switch, straight to the magneto, and I just buttoned everything up. Uh, I wasn't going to button everything up. I was going to test it first before I buttoned things up, but then Quinn the mailman came, and uh, we were talking. So while we were talking, I figured I'd put the stuff on. You know? I'm pretty sure it'll work. 
If this thing starts right now, it means it worked. So here we go. We're going to try. I mean it will start, right? What? show you the uh, charging the throttle take this off fourteen point five rising. Let me lower it, lower the throttle. Lower the throttle because it's uh, 20 horsepower, you know. So here, lowering the throttle takes it to 13.67. So we know it's charging. Let's see if it shuts off, huh? Because uh, I wi rewired it, so. Awesome, and it shuts off. And starts. I'd like to burn off all this ass gas. So, uh, all I wanted to do just now was to test and see if the uh, battery, you know, was recharging, which we found out that it does, right? But in the meantime, I had to go through all that static and, uh, you know, bypass the magneto wire, you know? So, that was like an hour just now, you know? I haven't even started on the deck yet, which was the entire purpose of this video. Can you believe that? You know, while I got it running, let's see if it goes forward and backwards. Go reverse first. How do you work this thing? Okay. forward and backwards fine I need to move that seat a little forward it's too too far back for me so I'm gonna get started on this deck now I'm gonna raise it up and uh, try to pull it down
MTD means to make this easiest way to remove, but it's actually one of the hardest decks to remove ever. There's actually only three connecting points, all right? But then the way they designed it is though, everything is so heavy and bulky, right? That any type of rust or resistance, like if you haven't removed it in a while, I mean, there's just no way. There's two things that you gotta pull out in the back and it just hooks in the front. And there's also, I'm sorry, four points. There's also a cable attached to a spring with a R-clip that you pull out. But I mean, the access to the R-clip, I mean, you need like these long thingamajig nose things just to get it in the little hole, grab it, and then try to pull and hope it, hope it moves, you know, with all the rust and stuff. And this thing is so heavy and huge, you know what I mean? So finally I did get it removed. Sucked. MTD sucks. I hate MTD. MTD sucks. By the way, did I say that MTD sucks? <coughs> Holy shit. Anyway, so um, these um, belts were seized onto um, these, this pulley here. After I unseize the, the belts off the pulleys, right, they actually move. They actually move freely. Now, I'm going to get you closer here. So there's the deck. It's a triple blade. It's a good thing I removed it because, look at this. When I took this off, I was like, is that supposed to be just like hanging there like that? No. It was supposed to be like here. This part here, this bolt, is busted. The other end is in this hole right here. So it's supposed to be like that. But it's, but it's off, see? This bolt here, it's broken on the bottom. The other part is stuck in that hole. So this is how it works. Um, there's one belt on the very bottom, and that is connected to all three, all three blades on the bottom. Then there's another layer of it on top, double pulley, right? And this goes to the, this goes to the uh, connect, uh, the uh, crankshaft. This doesn't seem right. Obviously need some Earl, you know. This is supposed to be in there like that. So uh, the tensioner, the, uh, the spring, the cable, the PTO cable, goes like somewhere around here. And when you, it goes like this, right? And then when you pull it, it tightens the belt like that. That's how it moves. Like I said, there's only three connections. This pin here, okay? But try to get that, look, look where they designed it. The R-clip is in between these two. So when you have it up there, you know, it, it's really hard to get the pin out from, from here, you know? I had a trouble, I had trouble taking this one out. As you can see, it's not here. I mean, I had to bang it, pull it, whatever, all the way. So it's just two connections here, two, two, uh, one connection here, right? One connection here, one connection here. That's two connections. And over here, there's a spring that goes all the way over here that pulls like one of these things that way, all right? And then the front is just the uh, front hanger right there. So they, their intention was to make it easy, but it's not easy, okay? It's very hard. There's the three blades. This one over here is trashed. Look, this part here is sticking out. But they all actually spin in synchronization with the belt. And they spin somewhat smoothly, you know. I think a little bit of earl and grease would do. But um, this blade is okay, the first one. Second one is kind of trashed. Third one is okay. But the most important thing right now is to get this nut out. This nut is broken, and I find another shaft or stud and get it through there so I can adhere that part of it. So check this out. That was really easy. 
easy to remove. going to remove the uh, stud off of the other side. This thing right here, need to get a new stud. This is spark plug size, 5 8 inch impact out? Sorry, it wasn't 5 eighths, it's 3 fourths. And I have that half inch ratchet out, or impact. Okay, but it's not coming out. It's spinning, but it ain't coming out. Why isn't it coming out? I see. Now, where am I going to get one of these? I don't have one of these. Oh, man. You know, this sounds like I'm going to have to spend some money. No! No money! Uh-huh. So, you know I don't like to spend money, right? So... So here's the busted one, see? And then I have this John Deere thing that I had from, I think, uh, I think Nick from Medford gave it to me. I have this one too, but this is not as wide as that one. This one is exactly the width of this hole. Exactly. Look at that. But this is kind of contoured over here. So that if you have a bolt in there, right? Let's say you have a, let's say you have the bolt in here. You're not going to be able to turn it because of the contour. It's uh, getting in the way of the, the nut. So I want. I think it, the this stud is long enough that I could actually accommodate a washer here. So in that way, that way I can turn it. You know what I mean? So this is the same shaft diameter as this one, and uh, maybe not as long, but the. Um, but it'll allow enough to get through to the bottom and maybe tighten it. Maybe I should get rid of this washer because there's only a half inch sticking out and you're gonna need some threads to, yeah, I don't think that'll work. So you know what? I'm gonna have to get rid of this washer. Just put this through all the way by itself. Let's see if I can turn this later. I think that reaches. Pretty tight, man. Pretty tight. I think that did it. Didn't even have to screw it in from the front, uh, the top. Sweet. Now that's secured on there, so when you engage that, this pulls back. stuck on the bottom. I know, I really shouldn't have any um, 
I really shouldn't have this like that. I'm gonna get caught. Not a good place to test. I should bring this to the front and test it. So this blade here is the only one that has issues with it. Um, the back part of it is pulled up. And this back part of it is already gone. So to even it out, I'm just going to bend this one back and forth and have it break off too. Because it's not even. Oh, see how rusted the hell that is? Well, this might need new blades for sure. But that I'll leave to the new owner of it. If they want to change it, they can change it. But I'm pretty positive that this will cut grass just fine. Well, maybe I'll price it out, you know what I mean? Maybe I won't. It's pretty rusty. Got like this twine stuck in there. I'm going to lube up the um, spindles. I'm going to show you something else. So here's the deck on a uh, flat surface. And uh, after we just fix this thing right over here, I think I've got it routed just perfectly. This was, this was over that, which I don't think is right, you know. It's a keeper, so it has to keep the belt. So this is the one that goes to the crankshaft. And now it's pretty smooth. The only thing I'm concerned about right now is this tensioner. When this is pulled, it lifts the brake from here, but it doesn't go back. See what I mean? Got to screw with it a little before it goes back like that, see? So, I need to blow this part out because it's got a lot of grime and grease and stuff. And then I'm going to put some penetrating Earl in it. I'm going to use some penetrating oil from my friends over at Lucas Oil Products. This area right there will not go back by itself. See? <clears throat> will not go back by itself. I shouldn't be doing that. I should do here, there, not so much there, mostly there. Move this around. Uh -huh. It's snapping back and forth now. Aha! Uh -huh. It's going back now, see? By itself. Penetrating oil does wonders. The spring is very stiff. I'm going to lube the spring. I'm going to let it soak for a bit. 
not gonna go crazy, but gonna help it out. So my battery ran out as I was uh, putting the deck on. I think I put the deck on right and I uh, sharpened the blades as you saw in time lapse. Um, the oil was blacker than death. So I uh, drained the Earl, it was blacker than death. And of course I made a mess. You could see where it's now clean from wiping. You know, and then I took that same rag with the oil and I just rubbed it around. You know, this is going to clean up really nice, you know? I mean, this, this tractor is so dirty, right? But then if you just go like that to it, it's like, look what's underneath all the dirt. It is so black and clean, you know? This tractor is actually in very good condition. Um, see what the uh, oil reservoir, you know, it's one of those little, small little nuts that's inside. So when you opened it up, it was just pouring all over the place. I had to make like some kind of little funnel to put over there. After I drained it out, I wanted to put one of these on there so that it'd be easier to do the oil change next time. I was screwing and screwing. I couldn't get this thing in. I think this diameter is a little bit bigger than that, so I couldn't use it, unfortunately. So now I put the nut back in. Uh, I put one jug. This is old. I put one jug of this in there. Then I put uh, three quarters of a jug of this in there. Um, SAE 30 Plus motor oil conventional from my friends over at Lucas Oil Park. <laughs> And I put it in there, and of course I can't find it. I I have to make um, I have to make sure that I put more than enough in there because there's an oil filter on the other side, right? 
So the oil filter takes up some Earl too. And then that's after you run it, you can do the, you can check the levels again. And so like right now, it's right at full, which is good. But I have a feeling I might have to add a little bit more after I run it a bit because um, I haven't changed an oil filter on a tractor in quite a while. This is my first time in like a year, you know. As usual, I made a mess. Um, this was the oil filter that came off of it. It's yellow. I don't. I couldn't even tell you what brand or anything it was. Oh, it's a Briggs & Stratton. See? Anyway, uh, I didn't have a, an oil filter wrench to get off. I only have one for big enough for a car. I didn't have one this size. So I just used this big monkey wrench, but I had to kind of squeeze hard, you know, because it was really on there and it wouldn't come off. So finally did get it off. And then uh, this was all assuming that the new oil filters that I got from my buddy Samuel Sandoval over at Red Oaks Mowers me four brand new oil filters from Ford. This is the uh, FL910S model. It's compatible if you cross-reference it with all the Kohlers and the Briggs & Strattons. It's compatible with most of them, you know. And I just screwed it back, screwed it on there and uh, <laughs> it seems to be okay. But uh, I don't know why oil changes are so messy. God, I mean really messy, man, you know? But uh, so, yeah, changed the oil filter, changed the Earl. Uh, I'm going to start it up and let it run for a bit and then check the levels again because I want the Earl to go through the oil filter. You know what I'm saying? Uh, this oil filter is almost twice the height of that one, so it sticks out uh, more than the other one. But it's okay because I checked that before I put it on, see? It doesn't it doesn't impede anything, so I thought it was fine, you know, change the oil filter. So uh I'm gonna give it a start now and then see what happens. So it doesn't leak, you know. So far so good, I don't see any leaks anywhere. So I'm going to let it settle for a little bit before I check the levels again. So I just checked. The Earl is right on the money. Let's go for a ride and test the mower deck and see if it drives and all that. Hey, look at this. Holy cow. Lights work. That's one less job I gotta do, right? Rides really nice. It's very smooth. Good power too. Let's try the uh, PTO. I'm 
going slow. So far so good. It's really smooth. It's running out of gas. Burned up all that ass gas that was in there. Clean tank. Now the ass gas is gone. and it holds just fine. Uh, both front tires are actually like new. It's a pain in the ass to work on. It runs nice. You feel the horsepower. It's smooth. This is the CVT transmission. Step on the clutch, right? It slows down. You put it to super fast. Put it down like that. Let go. The parking brake. Put it down to the middle like that, and then let go. It'll only go to like third gear, you know what I mean? Now, if you want it to go really fast, put it all the way to the top. And let go of the clutch. That's your, that's your speed selector. Now we're going pretty fast. So that's your CVT hand controlled variable transmission. It's all right, no big deal. No problem. And here's your PTO engage. Nice 
Reversing a 46 is a little bit more tricky. Oh shit. Like I said, I watch both sides. Barely fits. Almost, almost made it. So how about that, guys? This was uh, the first tractor from the trade with uh, Mondo Mowers. Go check him out on Instagram and YouTube. He's a good guy. Makes good videos, too. Um, it was a nice tractor, you know, just to look at. You know, uh, I knew that it was probably a pretty good tractor since it's, you know, extra big. It's a 46. It looked like it was good quality, you know pain in the butt about the mower deck but i'm glad we were able to get it off today you know not without some struggles and stuff uh sharpen the blades uh they feel fine you know what i mean just to use and stuff and uh there doesn't seem to be any hang-ups or scraping or anything like that and uh we greased the uh, spindles and uh, loosened up the belts i replaced one of the bolts to for the tensioner you know arm and uh, that worked out good too Got it back on here again. I changed the oil. I changed the uh, oil filter and uh, runs like a dream. Do need a new battery. I need to go to Walmart and get some more batteries. I'm always short of, you know, batteries and I need like 10, you know what I mean? And now they're $24.97, so it's extra expensive. But I have a few cores now, three or four cores that I can exchange. Uh, we went around the block uh, for a ride and uh, without a hiccup, just smooth, full throttle the entire way around the block. The lights work without me messing with it, which is great. You know, I love lights. And um, it looks like once you power wash this whole thing, which I can't do right now because my uh, water lines are still uh, winterized, you know, I got to turn them on for the summer. But like I said, I still think we're going to get snow this year, and it's at least going to be under 32 degrees. So the minute I turn that thing on, my sprinklers are, are going to freeze. If You know, I have to make sure that the temperature's right before I can turn on my water. Oh, maybe I can go to my friend Jason's house and use his uh, power washer. He's ha he has one of those things, the um, ego ones, you know, where you don't need to be plugged into your wall or something like that. Uh, I'm not sure. But I do need to wash this, uh, at least wipe it down. But the engine compartment is just filthy, you know what I mean? Um, but it looked like it would clean up really easily, you know? You know what I'm saying? So, like, the paint, there's no rust or anything like that. It's just dirty, you know, really dirty. Engine compartment, too. So I'd like to eventually power wash it before I take pictures of it and actually list it for sale. But um, we're not quite ready to list this for sale yet. You know what I mean? It still needs a battery, uh, needs a wash. Um, what else does it need? I would, do the, I would do the valves, adjust the valves and stuff, but honestly it starts just fine. You know what I mean? So I don't really, I don't hear any clicking, I don't hear any lifter clicking or, or anything. And you know what I say, if it's not broken, don't fix it. You know, like if you're trying to adjust the valves and there's nothing wrong with the valves, but you just want to adjust it because you don't know when the last time it was adjusted. Well, I mean, you could break the bolt. You could strip the bolt. You can leave one of the bolts inside the engine block. Uh, you could break the um, valve cover gaskets. You could do something to it. All completely unnecessary, you know. But uh, if I have a sign that I need to adjust the valves, I will. But for now, I don't really see it. I do need a new battery, though. But anyway, thanks for joining me today on my uh, 
mower deck inspection, uh, removal and um, repair. We had that bolt that was broken. Um, reinstall it, uh, made sure the belts are good, greased the fittings and all that, and greased the uh, spindles. Made sure that the belts were okay uh, around the pulleys. Did an oil change and a uh, oil filter change. Went around the block, pumped this tire up, all the tires hold air, good condition. I kind of like it, but like I said, I can't keep it. It's a 46 wide and won't fit in my backyard. But uh, I'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey guys, support my channel by a sticker. Also, follow me on Instagram at Mowers Blowers. Check out my website, MowersBlowers.com. See you guys on my next project. Have a great day. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers.